Is Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos the best game in the trilogy for the NES? While the first game in the series is certainly a classic, this sequel improves upon many aspects of the original. Most notably is the addition of a special new ninja magic that allows the hero, Ryu Hayabusa, to split his body into two or even three parts. These phantom doubles follow behind Ryu and will attack or even use sub-weapons in sync with the player. While the developers likely lifted this mechanic from Ninja Spirit, a 1988 arcade game from Irem that would get a popular port on the TurboGrafx-16, it always feels awesome to command an entire squad of deadly ninjas, and this is a unique experience on the NES that should not be missed. While developer Tecmo had some solid titles on the NES like Fire and Ice, Rygar, and Tecmo Super Bowl, the original Ninja Gaiden was one of their biggest hits. So of course they wanted to replicate that success with a sequel. Once again, the legendary Masato Kato was put in charge. While Masato Kato may not be as well known as Shigeru Miyamoto, in addition to the Ninja Gaiden games, Kato also worked on the stories for some of the best RPGs of all time, including Xenogears, Final Fantasy VII, and Chrono Trigger. For Ninja Gaiden 2, Kato wasn't just the director, but also a story writer and the lead artist. Oddly, he's credited using the nickname Run Maul this time, instead of Run Maru that he used in the first game. In addition to their savage difficulty, the Ninja Gaiden games are also known for their cinematic stories. Between each of Ninja Gaiden 2's seven acts, the story plays out in beautifully rendered anime-inspired cutscenes. The story picks up one year after the tragic events of the first game, where Ryu narrowly thwarted the efforts of sinister villain Guardia Demu, known as the Jokwio, to summon a demon and bring about a horrific apocalypse. Along the way, Ryu defeated the Jokwio's top underlings, a vicious group known as the Malice Four, but lost his father, leaving him as the last ninja in the Dragon Clan. If there was one silver lining, it was that Ryu found love with CIA Special Agent Irene Liu, who had been sent in to investigate the Jokwio. But Ryu was a fool to think that was the last time his ninja skills would be tested. Now a shadowy figure hatches a scheme atop a lightning-shrouded tower. Ashtar, the master of darkness, leader of the demon clan, seeks to open the gate of darkness. Ashtar wields the titular Dark Sword of Chaos, a twisted blade fashioned from one of the rib bones that held the heart of Joshin, the demon Ryu killed in the first game. While the story may be a bit predictable, the graphics and the cutscenes are very well drawn and have the look of an animated comic book. It's much darker and more violent this time. Wanting to see the dramatic conclusion gives you some extra motivation to choose continue after a brutal game over. The game was fairly successful for Tecmo when it released in North America in 1990 and Europe in 1992 under the title Shadow Warriors 2. It wasn't the breakout hit that the first game was, but it was definitely popular enough for the series to get a third entry, The Ancient Ship of Doom, in 1991. In modern times, the game is still well regarded by fans and critics alike. When IGN created their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Ninja Gaiden 2 at number 43. Of the three games on the NES, Ninja Gaiden 2 is probably the least difficult. Still, the least difficult Ninja Gaiden game is far from easy, and modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. 
this game features knockback and constantly respawning enemies, two hallmarks of the series. The dreaded birds are back and will be popping up in just the right place to knock you into an instant death pit. And this time there's no spin slash attack to easily kill the bosses. But what if I told you how to find all of the hidden scrolls of the dragon spirit so you can max out your magic power? What if I showed you secret techniques to maximize the power of your phantom doubles? And what if I showed you how to defeat all of the game's challenging bosses, with or without using sub-weapons, even the final demon itself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Ninja Gaiden 2. Before we get started here, there is a secret code you can enter on this first screen. If you hold up, left, select A and B, and then press start, the screen will flash and you press start again, you'll come to this sound test, which is pretty neat. Now, there's actually two other sound tests that you can access, and they're just different looks for the sound test. You can press start to exit this one. The way to see the second one is to wait for this screen to fade out, then press start to bring it back up again, and do the same thing. Hold up left, A, B, select, and then press start. This time, you'll get a sound test with a chibi version of Irene instead of the chibi version of Ryu. So just a little bit of a different graphic. To get the final sound test, wait for this screen to fade out, then press start to bring it up again. Wait for it to fade out a second time and press start to bring it up again. And then do the same thing we did before. Press and hold up left, select A, B, and press start and you'll get this very cool looking final sound test that has some sound channels and both chibi characters. If you do this on the European version, instead of holding up, you're going to hold down, but everything else is the same. And that's it. You can press start to go back to the title screen, and let's start up the game. As we begin Act 1, you'll notice that there's a lot of upgrades that were made from the first game, like we just start with a sub-weapon. It's a basic throwing star that costs 5 magic points, but hey, it's better than nothing. And this is a brand new sub-weapon, the Fire Dragon Ball, that costs 8 points to use and shoots downwards. Of all the sub-weapons other than the basic throwing star, I think it's my least favorite, but they are useful in some situations. This sub-weapon, the Art of the Fire Wheel, however, is the best sub-weapon. It's awesome and will be very useful against bosses. It costs 8 MP to use and shoots upward. This orange ninja icon will give us our first phantom double, which is going to be critical to our strategy here. And the Invincible Fire Wheel is much improved from the first game. It doesn't go away after you use it and you can keep spending 15 Nimpo points to continue using it over and over again. We'll continue to use the Art of the Fire Wheel though here because it's probably still the best because it costs a lot less points to use, almost 50% less. Up here we can find our second Phantom Double. You can only have two at the same time, and you can see how effective they are with the Fire Wheels. Make sure to climb down the ladder. Don't just jump down, you'll die climb down this ladder, and that will take us towards the end of the stage. Is that the Barbarian, the first boss from the first game? No time to think about that now, though, because we're about to fight Dando the Cursed, an abomination created by fusing together the bodies of Vikings that had drowned at sea. 
attack him a few times and whenever he charges you want to climb the wall but jump off before he hits the wall because if you're on it when he hits you'll drop down and take damage. If you don't have any Nimpo power that's okay. Attack him three to four times and then take a step backwards and whenever he charges you want to do the same thing. Just climb the wall and jump off before he hits it. Either way, it won't be long before he's sent back to the briny deep, and we're on to our first cutscene. Who are these thugs? Yeah, it seemed like a lot of them were clones of the first boss from the original game. I've got questions. It seems that we need to save the girl. And of course he means Irene. I think Irene may be the only female character in this entire game series. No time to lose, Hayabusa. Move on out. Hmm. Yeah, nice try, guy. Bullets can't stop Ryu. We know that from the first game. Oh. Oh, he shot the boss? I thought that guy had convincingly exploded. Well, maybe that guy is a friend. Except that he disappeared into the shadows. Or no, it seems like he's just hiding right behind the wall. You're really lessening the impact of your disappearance there, guy. Well, in any case, we need to go to the Tower of Laja. It's time for Act 2. Act 2 starts out with an exciting battle atop a moving train. Notice that you can actually jump down into the area between the cars and be totally safe. I'm not sure if we bought a ticket for this train, or if we just jumped on like a hobo riding the rails, but either way we need to make our way to the right. This enemy with the hockey mask is called a Jackson, but you know they meant Jason Voorhees. Make sure to grab this icon which will max out your ninja magic. They say that it's a red icon in the instruction manual, but it clearly looks orange in the game. Here we can find the invincible fire wheel, which is very handy here, you may want to activate it. We can also find a windmill star over here, and the windmill star is very good on the train because everything is sort of a flat surface. Don't forget to get that health refill. And then make your way over to the right. You can do the swag star move in this game just like you could in the original. Jump over your windmill star after you throw it, and it'll just keep going as long as you don't catch it. This also goes for your phantom doubles. Over here we can grab the art of the fire wheel, because it's time that we moved on to the second part of the stage. The moving train didn't affect Ryu's jumping, but the wind here certainly will. Watch the direction of the rain, or maybe that's snow, I'm not sure. Use the wind to your advantage. Whenever it's with you, jump across large gaps, and never try to make big jumps when the wind is going against you. Over here we'll find a ladder and can climb up to the next level. There's a lot more climbing in this stage, and you'll notice that in Ninja Gaiden 2, you can just climb up walls. You don't have to do all that bouncing around nonsense that we did in the first game. Over here, if we use our Art of the Fire Wheel, we'll reveal a bunch of power-ups, one of which is the Scroll of the Spirit of the Dragon, which increases our maximum magic points by 10 permanently. This is a must-collect item, and once you get it, if you die and come back through this area, you won't be able to find it again. Instead, you'll just get a regular blue Nimpo icon. Over here, there's an extra life if you want to climb up the wall and hit it. Make sure you have the wind with you before you make that jump. Watch out for the bird over here. It's technically called a harpy. And you don't really want the windmill star here, but if you do collect it by accident, that's okay, because there's going to be another fire wheel right before the boss. This crystal ball contains a medicine for recovery that will restore a large portion of your health, and you just want to jump over from the right wall, or you can just climb down the left wall and hold down and left as you drop off. Grab the Art of the Fire Wheel down here if you don't already have it, and avoid the Fire Dragon Balls. This is Baron Spider, an evil scientist that gained spider powers after he was bitten by one. Just make a jump to the right, and that will position your Phantom Doubles so that you can just rapidly attack with your Fire Wheels and deal a ton of damage. Then you can just jump over and finish him off. If you don't have any power, if you hang out in this spot, you're kind of safe from the spiders when he throws them, and then you can jump over to his platform, hit him a few times, which will cause him to drop down, 
or you can drop down and hit him a few more times. So do the same thing, wait in this spot right there, he'll throw the spiders, climb up, jump over, hit him, drop down, hit him again, go back to your safe spot, wait for the spiders, there they are. And just keep doing this over and over again. The only thing that can complicate it is the wind. The wind can be a bit of a nuisance here, so you definitely want to stay as far away as you can from the left side of the screen. You do not want to blow off the edge. Looks like we have a chance to interrogate evil Spider-Man. Let's see what he has to say. He's led by the Emperor of Darkness. That sort of sounds like a title that you give to somebody when you kind of forgot to give them a title at all. It's like, you get to be Emperor of Europe, I'll be Emperor of Asia. And what will I be Emperor of? Oh yeah, Ashtar. Um, you can be Emperor of Darkness, how does that sound? Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. Thanks guys. Oh, oh that Ashtar. Well, we need to find Irene before it's too late. And here at the beginning of Act 3, we see the classic Ninja Gaiden scene. The tower rises in the background as Ryu looks on. Let's go. Before we get started here in Act 3, I want you to see that if you pause the game, the lightning in the background will still go off, so you could use that to your advantage to pause the action and see where the platforms are that you need to jump to in this stage. Make sure you know where you're jumping whenever you go from platform to platform in this stage, and we can pick up an Art of the Firewheel here, which we can use against that Will-o'-the-Wisp enemy. Although it looks like a fireball, it's still vulnerable to fire. These bonus bottle items we keep finding are just worth additional points. Now, points can gain you extra lives in this game. Whenever you get 100,000 points, you'll get an extra life. But you do get infinite continues in Ninja Gaiden 2, and it brings you back in a pretty generous location, so it's not that important to get a lot of points to gain lives. There's two paths over here. You can go on the top or the bottom. If you head across the top, you'll be able to get the invincible fire wheel and you'll find a medicine to recover some health, but you will need to go back across the bottom to be able to move forward. So carefully make your way across here. You want to pause for a moment to take out that will o' the wisp that appears and then head over to the right. This part's very dangerous, so make sure that the lights are on before you jump down to that platform, and watch out for the bats that come flying towards you. Feel free to use sub-weapons to destroy them. We're gonna wait for the lightning and then jump over and clear this barbarian. And that hustle and Jim got us from behind, but at least he didn't knock us into a pit. The last little bit of 3-1 is difficult, and there are no checkpoints in this stage. Come down here and get that medicine, and I would actually just use a sub-weapon before jumping across so you don't get hit by a hustle and gym. Make sure to take out those two will-o'-wisps before you jump across here, and that will make sure that you safely get down into stage 3-2. I think that guy we just killed was a small version of the Basker, who was the third boss in the original game. And that guy standing up there? That was Bomberhead. He was the second boss in the original game. And if we run into Bloody Moth, we'll have seen the entire Malice 4 at this point. As we make our way to the top of the Tower of Laja, we can grab the Fire Dragon Balls here. They won't summon Shen Long, but they are useful for this small stretch. Avoid the throwing stars and we can upgrade to the Art of the Fire Wheel. But over here, there's the Fire Dragon Balls again, which we should probably avoid. If you do accidentally get them, that's okay. There will be another Art of the Fire Wheel before the boss. Don't miss that red Nympho before you move on here, and down at the bottom we'll find a Scroll of the Spirit of the Dragon, which will increase our maximum ninja magic by 10 points. Do not miss it. The birds are very dangerous over here. Don't be afraid to use your sub weapons to take them out. And then jump over to this ladder to climb up to the next floor. To avoid this roll for enemy, I like to jump on the wall over on the right, and then we can get an Art of the Fire Wheel there if we don't have one already. Clear these birds and then use your Fire Wheel on that bomber head enemy to get a 1-up right above him and take him out. It takes two slashes of your sword to kill him, and he'll definitely knock you into the pit if you try to mess around. Use the Fire Wheel instead. And that, that was Bloody Moth. We've now seen clones of the entire Malice 4. 
what is going on here? There's a medicine up here, and then another bloody malt, which is hard to clear without using your sub-weapons. It takes three slashes of your sword if you don't use a sub-weapon. And then we can climb up. It's time to face the boss, Funky Dynamite. Is it Funky Kong with a jetpack? No, it's a cyborg based on the giant Commodore Lizard. Use your Art of the Fire Wheel to knock it out of the air, and then wait for it to float up again. Then hit it a second time with the Art of the Fire Wheel, which will drop it to the floor once more. Lather, rinse, repeat. If you don't have the Fire Wheels, what you want to do is get up on one of these platforms, jump over its projectile, and then use your Ninja Doubles to hit it out of the air. You can only hit it in the air. Whenever it drops down on the ground, you won't be able to damage it. So just stay on the platform, jump over, and hit it out of the air. Now, if you want to try something a little more aggressive, it is possible to use your double to trap him in one of the corners. So you can try this. And then whenever he floats back up, you'll just hit him immediately again. So you're just kind of mashing. And you'll be able to deal a lot of damage that way. So that's the other way you can beat him. Trying to trap him on one of the sides and just mash your attack button so that whenever he drops down, he'll land on the platform and he'll quickly go into your blade when he floats up. Once the funky dynamite explodes, we'll finally be reunited with Irene. But of course, it's a trap. Yeah, I think we should have seen this coming. Of course Ashtar kidnapped Irene to bait us into coming to the Tower of Laja. And then he waited there to ambush us. Certainly those enemies that he left to defeat us weren't enough to kill Ryu Hayabusa, the great warrior from the Dragon Clan. But what is this guy's connection to the Jokbyo? Is he the one that's been making the clones of the Malice Four? Yeah, some warrior we turned out to be. We should definitely have been watching our back when we saw Irene. Luckily, it looks like our friend Robert has gotten ahead of us once again. I'm not sure how he keeps doing that, but he really needs to learn that, that you can't kill ninjas with guns. It doesn't work, Robert. Stop trying to shoot ninjas, that's just stupid. And telling them that the tower is surrounded? Do you think this guy cares? He has ninja magic. He's just gonna do his ninja vanish thing and be gone. He wants us to follow him into the maze of darkness. It seems like a bad idea, but he took Irene with him. So that's where we're going next. It's time for Act 4. Now that Ashtar has taken off, it's time to have a little conversation with our new friend Robert. And the first thing that we want to know, what exactly is the Dark Sword of Chaos? Huh, <laughs> he said bone of the demon. <laughs> bone. Well, Ryu seems surprised to hear about this, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Anytime that you have a magical sword fused with the powers of good, there has to be a magical sword infused with the powers of evil. It seems that Robert is with special intelligence in the US Army, yet he still doesn't know that you can't kill magic ninjas by shooting them. At least unload the clip into the guy. You're going to need to deal a minimum of 16 damage to clear his entire health bar. The going definitely gets tougher as we brave the heat of the Maze of Shadows. Take out these Mongolian enemies and stock up on magic points. You can also find an Art of the Fire Wheel and a Phantom Double if you need it. Wait for that Psychic Brain to explode before jumping over the gap and avoid the Fire Dragon Balls, but don't miss the Red Nympho power-up which will fill you to the max. There's a Windmill Star up here which could be useful. But down here we'll find an invincible fire wheel that can make this section quite easy. Turn it on for 15 magic points and just burn your way to the ladder. At the top of the ladder is a single will of the wisp. If you quickly move across the platforms it won't be able to catch up to you. Do a swift kick to get up onto the platform or jump from the left wall. Watch out for the rockman enemy and the mongolians. And at the top here we can get a medicine to restore our health. But don't hit this crystal ball as you jump over to the right. Hit it as you jump back across to the left. 
If you do it that way, you'll definitely collect the item inside, and it's one of those scrolls of the spirit of the dragon that will increase our Ninpo magic by 10 points permanently. Over here, we need to be very careful to avoid knockback. These large bat enemies are called Oblies, and they're essentially the same as the birds. Also, watch out for the psychic brain enemies, but it's those bats that you really gotta watch out for. If you get caught by one, try to catch any wall that you can and climb back up on top. The Nintendo Power Player's Guide wonders what this bizarre blue substance is in Stage 4-2. Well, here on planet Earth, we call that stuff water. Hold down and right as you drop off the wall, and that will get you onto the platform with no problems. Carefully climb up the wall here and take out the Barbarian clone, and there's a Phantom Double for you in the crystal above. We currently have the Fire Dragon Balls, but right here we can pick up the Superior Art of the Fire Wheel, and also a Red Nimpo Magic Boost, which will restore our magic points to the max. Climb down the ladder here and carefully make your way across the water. You can actually damage boost off of the birds so that you can catch a wall and climb up to the higher levels in this area. But if you're having trouble doing that, I'll show you the regular way to go. Just head all the way across the bottom, kneeling down to take out the bird when it comes towards you. Wait for that rolfer to walk off the platform and then jump over and kill any other rolfer that may appear on the other side. Jump back to the right and head across. You're going to make your way all the way over to the right where you'll be attacked by a bird again, so you need to kneel down to take it out, and climb up the platforms to head all the way back to the left. Watch out for those hustling gems. Cut your way through, then go on down the ladder to get to the last checkpoint. Deep down here in the final segment of 4-2, we can perform a trick to gain hundreds of extra lives. This crystal ball contains a medicine that will restore our health, and we want to carefully make our way to the left across these platforms and collect this extra life. Then if we go all the way to the left and climb up the wall, we can climb this ladder and then go right back down, and we'll see that all of the items have respawned, including the 1-Up. You'll also be able to get the medicine again to restore your health points, and we're just going to make our way to the left and collect that one up a second time. You can repeat this loop as many times as you want to rack up as many extra lives as you need. But remember, you do get infinite continues in this game, so the extra lives aren't that important. There's a red magic boost here, so make sure to grab that. And then make your way back to the right. Oddly, it doesn't seem like the items usually respawn when you go up and down a ladder in most other parts of the game, or that is something that we would want to abuse a lot more often. Head up this wall and make your way to the right. We have the fire dragon balls right now, which are actually pretty handy for this small section. Over here, we'll notice a pumpkin head enemy, which is another classic one from the original game. Don't forget that water flowing down a wall won't prevent you from climbing it, it'll just provide a little bit of resistance. We have the fire dragon balls right now, but for the boss we want the windmill throwing star, which we'll find in the last crystal ball. This is Naga Sutova, a dinosaur that's been hanging out in this cave since ancient times. If you have the windmill throwing stars and enough ninja magic, you can just stay on the upper left edge and pelt him with throwing stars until he's defeated. But if you don't have any magic points, he's still pretty easy to defeat. What you want to do is watch which way the hand is coming from. You want to climb up the wall that the hand is heading towards, then jump onto the platform and attack the face two times. Drop down into the middle and climb up the opposite wall, where you'll be able to jump onto the platform nearby and do the same thing. So just keep doing that, drop off into the center, climb the wall, attack two times, drop off into the center, and Naga Sutova will become extinct. What is he after? That dinosaur probably just wanted to eat us. And then it seems that Ashtar speaks to Ryu through ninja telepathy? Not only that, but suddenly Irene is able to hijack the ninja telepathy and throw in her own little message. This is making less sense by the minute here. 
Also, Ashtar wants us to show ourselves? I mean, what do you think we're trying to do here, Ashtar? You're the one talking to us through telepathy. Why don't you show yourself? I don't think you're actually that tough. Jump to the left wall at the beginning of Act 5 and go across the top platforms to find a red ninja power icon and max out our magic points. Then carefully drop down below when the coast is clear for the enemies. This white octopus looking guy is called a goblin's eye. You want to wait for it to jump over you and then carefully make your way across the platform avoiding the shots from Sniper Joe. Wait for another goblin's eye to jump off, and you can find a fire dragon ball power-up in the first crystal ball, but there's a lot of power-ups here. If you jump off the wall, you can get a windmill star. If you throw your star from the wall, you can get the fire wheel, and then you can find the invincible fire wheel if you use the art of the fire wheel to get that last crystal. The invincible fire wheel will be very helpful down here in this next section. We don't want to get any different sub-weapons, so avoid the fire dragon balls here on the left. But once you get across this fire, turn on that invincible fire wheel and start moving to the right. You'll go right through a bomber head, and there's a windmill star here that you don't want to get. And use it again to get through that bloody maul. And don't forget to get the scroll of the spirit of the dragon at the top before you drop down. Down here we can use our invincible fire wheel once again to make our way through some bomber head enemies, but then we'll probably want to get the art of the fire wheel and try to collect this medicine before we move on to the right. Carefully make this jump without hitting the spikes, you just want to tap the button. And when we go through this door we'll see a short cutscene. At this point we're either close enough to Ashtar to be able to hear him talking, or he left telepathy on by mistake and now we're hearing him through that. It seems that he needs immortal blood to summon an almighty evil, and immortal blood? Is he talking about the fact that Ryu can come back to life infinite times by continuing? I thought that was just a game mechanic, but no, maybe it's part of the plot. We'll get you, Ashtar. Our final showdown is coming soon. Just like in Dante's Inferno, the deeper we get into the underworld, the colder it gets. Make your way to the right and you'll have to deal with the icy surfaces here that you'll slip and slide on. Try to get used to that as you make your way across. There's some blue ninja power, make sure to grab that for 10 extra points. And head to the right where you can grab a phantom double if you need it. Down here we can find an Art of the Fire Wheel, which could come in handy, and we'll want to climb up this wall, but let Jackson jump over first. Right below us is a Phantom Double, so if you already have two, you don't need to collect it and can avoid it. Make your way to the right and use your Art of the Fire Wheel to take out these tarantulas, or just wait for them to drop off as you move forward. Climb up this wall, and at the top we can grab the Fire Dragon Balls, which will make it easier to clear this enemy at the bottom, and then get the one up. Don't drop off the left side though. Climb back up the wall and head over to the right. That crystal ball that you see there has a medicine in it, so don't miss it before you go down the ladder. Once you go down the ladder on the left side, you'll be at another checkpoint, and you just want to hold down and right as you drop off there, and that will put you on the platform easily. Come over here, take out the Rolfer. We can use our Fire Dragon Balls to clear this Barbarian, and then pick up an Art of the Fire Wheel. This jump is actually kind of difficult, so make sure you have a bit of momentum before you go across and use your Art of the Fire Wheel to clear out some enemies and get up onto the wall. You can see there's an invincible fire wheel down there, but you don't actually need it. What we definitely want is the Art of the Fire Wheel for the boss here, although we will have another opportunity to collect another one. If you head back to the left, there's just some bonus jars there that you don't actually need. Clear this enemy and drop down. If you accidentally pick up those fire dragon balls, there's another Art of the Fire Wheel right here, which you definitely want for the boss. You'll also be able to collect a few more magic points, which you'll want as well. And here's the door. It's time to face Ashtar. Show yourself, Ashtar. This guy has the nerve to say, at last, the foolish ninja is ready to fight? We've been ready to fight the whole time. And then one of the most intense scenes on the NES occurs. I'm not sure how the Nintendo sensors let this slip by. 
they probably just couldn't make it this far in the game. Yep, Ashtar stabs Irene. And he gets her good too. She really goes down. This is all kind of implied violence at this point, but then they show the blood-soaked sword dripping. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Ashtar is really asking for it at this point. He is going to pay for what he's done here. But before that, it looks like Robert got here ahead of us again. How does this guy keep doing that? I mean, I thought Ryu was a very fast ninja, and I think we made our way across that area quite quickly. Well, he still hasn't learned his lesson about pointing guns at super ninjas. He's lucky that Ashtar didn't just kill him right there on the spot. It's also convenient that Robert is here to take care of Irene, who seems to be seriously wounded. I'm not sure what he wants him to do. I don't think you're going to be able to get very good ambulance service in the maze of shadows. Probably should just call a hearse. Well, at this point, it seems that Ryu is done listening to Ashtar. And I don't blame the guy. Yeah, you know what? Shut up, Ashtray. You're about to get smoked. Come on down and bring your A-game. If you have a lot of ninja magic, you just want to position yourself and your two ninja doubles right underneath Ashtar when he appears, and whenever he stops flashing, let him have it with a bunch of fire wheels. It should only take two or maybe three cycles to finish this guy off. Now, if you don't have a lot of magic points, there is a safe-ish spot right down here at the bottom of the left wall. I say that it's a safe-ish spot because every once in a while you may get hit here, but most of the time you won't. So what you want to do is whenever he disappears, get to the safe spot and then get underneath him or position yourself in such a way so that whenever he releases the fireballs, you'll be able to get a few hits on him. You want to hit him high up, like right up on the sword. This is a very good place to hit him from. If you can catch him from that left hand shaped platform, you can probably get a lot of hits on him over there. So that's my favorite spot. And then you can see I actually did take a hit there in the safe spot, so it's not 100% safe, but it is very, very safe. It works, like I said, about 90% of the time. And that's it. Ashtar has been defeated. We've done it. Some Emperor of Darkness you turned out to be. This guy was all talk. It seems that Ashtar is just too embarrassed to die in front of us. So with his final breaths, he casts his ninja teleport spell again and disappears to die elsewhere. But his final words are very ominous. What did he mean? Join forces? The shadows? We'll find out here in Act 6. For somebody that was stabbed clean through the abdomen, Irene doesn't look too bad. Although I don't like the way that she deflected whenever we asked if she was alright. It seems that she knows something about where Ashtar teleported to. It looks like this is far from over. We definitely don't want to leave Irene here alone. If we leave her here and go charging into battle, she'll almost definitely bleed out. The only thing that we're going to be coming back for would be her corpse. Unfortunately, it sounds like we're the only one that can destroy this evil altar. So we must move on. It's all that we can do. Wait, wait, Robert's still there? Has he been standing there this entire time? Well, if we knew Robert was here, then yeah, we'll leave Irene with him. Okay, perfect. Well, geez, I don't know why it was such a big dilemma. Maybe you should have spoken up a little sooner there, Robert. Act 6 begins with this dark cave that's filled with secrets. Make your way to the right, grabbing power-ups and taking out any Will-o'-the-Wisps or Sniper Joes that you see. 
those bats, also known as oblies, are the same as the birds, so be very careful of them. And at the end, we'll jump down this hole. Not something you usually do in this game, but it is safe right here. Watch out for that smaller bat and make your way down to this lower platform. Take out these enemies and work your way to the right where you'll find an Art of the Fire Wheel, which could be very helpful. Jump from where you can see yourself in the window and you'll be able to get this scroll of the Spirit of the Dragon, and head all the way to the left where you can slash an invisible power-up, which is a medicine that will restore your health. If you miss the scroll of the Spirit of the Dragon, you can also get it using your Art of the Fire Wheel. Make your way across to the right, watch out for that rock man, and be very careful not to get knocked off by those oblies. There are two goblin eyes down here. Clear them and head to the right, and if you use your Art of the Fire Wheel near this big stalactite, a 1-Up will drop out of the sky. Collect it and make your way to the right, and you'll find the exit to Stage 6-1. It seems that we can see our final destination in the distance. As we scale the wall, we look out. Is that Castle Grayskull? Does the world of Ninja Gaiden 2 exist in Eternia? Well, that's where we need to go. But first, let's check in with Irene and Robert. Well, it seems that Robert is short of breath. Even with a wounded woman at his side, he's still trying to get ahead of Ryu. Huh, this guy. But in the path in front of him, that pentacle can mean only one thing. That's right. It's the original villain. The one that started all of this. Of course, Irene knows who it is. But Robert is surprised? What kind of special intelligence are you, Robert? That's the Jockwio. Of course it's the Jockwio. We've seen signs of him all around. His Malice 4 have been clone enemies in this entire game. There's a red ninja power-up at the beginning of Stage 6 too, so don't miss that, and the rest of the stage is fairly straightforward. Grab the Art of the Fire Wheel and keep moving to the right, although once you have the Invincible Fire Wheel, for only about 30 Nimpo points, you can easily make it to the end of this stage in just two usages. At the end though, you'll find a Windmill Throwing Star, and that is the ideal weapon for the next boss, who's another throwback from the original game, the Kelberos. There's a secret strategy for defeating the Kelberos if you climb up the right wall and try to kick out over the top of it. So get up over the top, and when you get into this space over here, run to the right a bit, and then you want to kind of do a backwards jump, so you're facing left, and you jump back to the right, but still face left. That will line up your phantom doubles in this position. When you're in this position, you can just keep attacking, and if you're holding the down button to duck, the Kelberos should not be able to hit you. You should be able to finally just kill it. So just sit here and mash the button. You can only damage one of the two Kelberos enemies, so whenever you figure out which one that is, Make sure to let him have it with your windmill throwing stars whenever he gets close. That'll speed it up. But there is another strategy you might want to try. This one is good if you don't have all of your ninja doubles, although we do here, but I will show it to you anyway. When you figure out which one is the invincible Kalbaros, when that one is next to the left door, you can hit it with your windmill throwing star and knock it out the door, which will make it disappear forever. It's actually very easy to just follow behind a single Kelberos and just keep attacking it. It's not that hard to kill in this fashion. The second one complicates things a lot, but when there's only one, well, it's pretty easy. If you were unfortunate enough to make it to this boss with just no power-ups, what you want to do is get on the right side and just start striking while facing to the left so you can determine which of the Kelberos is the one that you need to attack. And once you figure that out, you just want to follow behind that one and constantly attack it, just like you did before in the strategy where there was only one on the board, except this time you do have to contend with the other one, which is almost certainly going to hit you a few times and deal you some damage. So if you get here with no ninja magic, 
I certainly hope you have a lot of health. Well, it seems that Ryu is finally putting two and two together. He may not have noticed the clones of all of the Malice 4 characters that he had been fighting, but he certainly noticed the Kelberos. It does look like Robert got here ahead of him, even after that encounter with the Jaquio. Man, this guy is fast. And on that note, we're on to act number seven, the final act. It may have been helpful for Robert to tell Ryu that it was the Jaquio that took Irene, but instead he takes this moment to let Ryu know that if the Gate of Darkness is opened, well, that will be the Turbo Apocalypse and the end of all mankind. I think we could have figured that out on our own, Robert. I mean, come on, it's called the Gate of Darkness. You know it's going to be something bad if he opens it. At this point, Robert decides to stay back and hold off the onslaught of enemies. Ryu will go on alone. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten, Robert T. Sturgeon. We'll always remember the way that you were able to get somewhere faster than anyone else. I would have loved to have had you ride beside me on a long trip and plan out just the best routes. You'd probably even be able to find good places to stop and eat, or maybe nice clean restrooms. Man, that would have been great. But alas, this looks like Robert's last stand. Alright you freaks, come and get it. You're gonna dream your worst nightmare. Man, gonna miss his one-liners too. Good luck, Robert. May the odds be ever in your favor. Stage 7-1 reminds me a lot of Jaquio's old place with the pillars and everything. There's just a lot more slime this time. Make sure to get this red ninja power up to maximize your magic points, and then head down to the bottom and go underneath this ledge. Take out the slime on the bottom, but then wait for the second one. Remember that if you're ever holding onto a wall in this game, you must use a sub weapon. You cannot attack with your sword. The game will not allow you. If you don't have enough Nimpo points, you'll just do nothing. It's like you'll flail your arms. So keep that in mind. Make sure to take out that Barbarian before moving forward. Over here, we can grab an Art of the Fire Wheel, and then grab the ladder to climb up. There are four Will of the Wisps here. A quick shot of the Fire Wheel should be able to take them out. We can use our Art of the Fire Wheel here to hit that high crystal, which will drop a scroll of the Spirit of the Dragon, which should take us to our maximum MP, which is 100. Although it is possible to get a few more scrolls than that, but we'll discuss that a bit later. Make your way to the right, and if you can get up onto this platform, which is easier said than done, you can grab the Invincibility Fire Wheel, but if you don't grab it, right down here there's an Art of the Fire Wheel, and that should be good enough. The Invincibility Fire Wheel is very point hungry. There are four Will of the Wisps here, and we'll want to use our Art of the Fire Wheel to clear them out. There is going to be one more of those red ninja power-ups at the beginning of Stage 7-2, so we can use a little bit of our ninja magic right now. There's another phantom double right there if you need it. The other crystal ball was just a bonus jar, so that one's not that important. Make your way across to the left. At the far left edge, you can use your Art of the Fire Wheel to get it. There is a one-up right before you go through the door. In this cutscene, it looks like Robert is still alive, but not for long. Everything is getting dark. So long, Robert. We salute you. Up next is Stage 7-2, the final stage of the game. It looks really cool with the beating hearts in the background, but it is anything but cool. This stage is super mean. High up in the air, there's a crystal ball that drops a red ninja power-up that will max out your ninja magic points. This is the last red ninja power-up in the game, so we're going to need to be a little bit conservative with our magic moving forward. Wait for a good opportunity to drop down there and take out that enemy. 
and then you can find an Art of the Fire Wheel, which we all know is just the best magic. This part can be very difficult though, so we are going to briefly grab the Invincibility Fire Wheel, which does use 15 points, but we will find a few blue ninja power-ups which should help compensate for it. Right there is that Invincibility Fire Wheel, and we want to get up on top here. That there is where we'll be able to get additional ninja scrolls later, but we can't do it right now, so just climb up the ladder, jump to the left wall, and climb the ladder on the right. Up here, we're going to find the very last Art of the Fire Wheel in the game. That was it right there. If you grab this Fire Dragon Ball or any other sub-weapon moving forward, you will not have the Art of the Fire Wheel for the final bosses, and it is the best. But we will still be able to do it with the Windmill Throwing Star, so I'm going to show you that first. Right there is the last extra life in the game, so make sure to grab that if you want it. And on top of that pillar, three birds attack you. You're going to probably need to use a sub-weapon or two to get through this area. Make sure to grab that medicine as well. Up here, there's another blue ninja power-up. Grab the ladder, and head on to the top. Well, this is it. The final stretch before the final bosses. Once again, we're going to need to fight three bosses. So carefully make your way past the enemies, but good news, the first time you get to the bosses, they are going to refill your health, but they are not going to refill your ninja points. So keep that in mind. Head to the right. We got the windmill throwing star, so that's going to be a pretty good choice for the final boss. Keep making your way to the right, and if you do accidentally pick up the fire dragon balls, there's another windmill throwing star at the very end right before the last door. You can't miss it. It looks as though we found Irene, but did we just walk into the exact same trap that we walked into earlier? It seems as though the bad guys used Irene as bait. They always use Irene as bait. And we don't know who it is? Man, Ryu, I thought you had figured it out after you fought the Kelberos. They really don't give you a good education in ninja school, do they? Yeah, it's the Jokwio. Gonna really slow roll this reveal, aren't we? Yeah, there it is. So how is it that Jokwio is still alive? Well, I'm glad you asked, Ryu. Yeah, it seems like Jokwio just couldn't wait to answer that question. You can never destroy the power of evil. Ah, it seems like his spirit went into another body after we killed him the first time. Oh yeah, that makes total sense. And he has the dark power of evil this time. Let me tell you something, Jokwio. We've played a lot of video games, and we've fought a lot of bad guys. The power of evil is actually pretty overrated, to tell you the truth. Well, it looks like he's about to reveal his master plan. It seems like he needs Ryu and Irene as some kind of sacrifices to bring back the demon. I'm assuming he's talking about the demon Joshin that he tried to awaken in the first game. It seems that he can bring him back through this gate of darkness using the Dark Sword of Chaos. In any case, we should get our controllers ready. Because if you remember fighting Jokwio in the original Ninja Gaiden, he was the most difficult boss in that game. And well, he's the most difficult boss in this game too. The first time you get up here, they are going to refill your health. But unlike in Ninja Gaiden 1, they don't refill your health for the second and third form of the boss. So you're going to need to do it on this one health bar, or you will be sent back to the beginning of stage 7-2. Now it could be a lot worse. In the first game, if you die on one of the bosses, they send you all the way back to dash 1 of the last act. They're a little bit more lenient here in Ninja Gaiden 2, but it is a pretty mean setback. They could have just sent you to the previous checkpoint, but that's not what's going on. So do not spare your magic points on this guy. 
Due to the flying nature of this boss, the art of the fire wheel is probably a bit better than the windmill throwing stars. But if you have the windmill throwing stars, you just want to position your phantom doubles in such a way that you can shoot volleys of those things into the guy. Every time you shoot one of your stars, it should deal 3 damage. And that will easily take him down. But if you don't have any ninja power, you're going to need to lean on your phantom doubles. And I found that the best way to fight Jacquio is to stay over here in the left corner. Use the platform to try to avoid him, but if you continue to make circles that push you into the left corner, it seems like Jacquio flies down there very frequently, and whenever he dips down low into the left corner, that's one of the easiest places to deal him a lot of damage. If you keep making circles around this platform and go into the left corner, there's a good chance that one of your phantom doubles, or both of them, is going to be positioned down there whenever he swoops in. So you need to avoid him first and foremost, try to avoid the fireballs, but if you hang out over on the left, he can be beaten. In typical Ninja Gaiden fashion, after killing the first boss, we see a cutscene. Man, we really messed up Jacquio. He is spilling so much blood on the floor. That guy is a goner. Well, I hope Irene's okay. I mean, she doesn't seem to have bled out already. Maybe Jacquio healed her up a bit to make sure that she was around to be used as bait. Well, in any case, it seems that we need to destroy this altar and... Uh-oh... That's not good. Jocquio's blood touched the sword. Man, could we not have, like, moved it out of the way or something? It seems that the sword has been awakened by Jocquio's blood. And now it's bringing back the demon. This is bad. This time, after we kill this demon, let's take all of the bones and incinerate them to ashes. I don't want there to be a single trace of this thing left. There should be no way for somebody to summon this guy again. And that, well, that is a very dark looking gate, so I can only assume, yep, the gate of darkness has opened. Well, this is it, you guys. Human sacrifice. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. With the gate open, the demon can come through, and it seems to have breathed new life into Jacquio. Together, they will be fused, creating some kind of new abomination. Although it seems that this demon has decided to take the form of something that's stuck in a wall, well, that's good for us. But it's about time to fight the second form of the boss. Let's go. If you spent all of your magic points in the battle against Jacquio, you still may have a chance against this boss. You want to walk to the right and jump right at his nose and attack, and then move a bit to the left to get out of the way of the rocks that it spits, but it should still position one of your phantom doubles in a good spot. Watch the acid above you and move out of the way whenever it's dropping on you. As long as you can keep your onslaught up, you should have no problem killing this guy. Now, if you do die on this boss, it takes you back to the beginning of stage 7-2. But if you defeated the first boss, there's actually a scroll of the spirit of the dragon that you can get, which will increase our maximum magic points to 110. So make your way over to the left. I have sped up the video here since we've done this before, but just keep making your way over to the point where we found that invincible fire wheel. So right here. And once you grab it, you want to get back up on top of that pillar in the middle. We can use the invincible fire wheel, and then that's where it is. And you can see we now have 110 magic points as our max. Now, if you actually kill the second boss, but die again, Whenever you come through, you can find another scroll and increase your max to 120. 
with more points if you can get up to this boss with a fire wheel just position your phantom doubles in this sort of formation and you'll take him out so fast it's actually almost too easy all right we've done it we've defeated the demon is this finally the end of it all no of course not we've played a ninja gaiden game before there's three bosses at the end not two and this one is actually going to look very familiar if you've played the first game. It looks a lot like the final boss of that game, although this one is maybe a little bit easier in my opinion, because you'll have your phantom doubles to help you out this time. If you still have some magic points left in the Yard of the Fire Wheel, this boss is almost too easy. You need to take out the head first. Jump over that hand and get into this position where you're ducked down, but you can still attack with your phantom doubles. When the first hand is almost fully retracted, you need to move to the left to get out of the way of the second hand, but then you'll finish off the head, get right up near the heart, and rapidly attack with your fire wheels to finish it off. If you don't have any ninja magic, jump over the first hand in the same way and duck down to deal a lot of damage, and remember to move out of the way whenever that first hand is almost finished retracting finish off the head and then you need to fight the heart by carefully jumping and slashing it but you want to watch where those shrimps are going up above. Those can deal you a good bit of damage so prioritize avoiding them and jump in and attack the heart whenever you can. If you do have a double positioned on the heart attack rapidly and either way you should be able to defeat the demon Joshin and complete Ninja Gaiden 2. We've done it. We've beaten Ninja Gaiden 2, the Dark Sword of Chaos. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. And I'm not kidding about it this time. This ending is very cheesy. It's like mozzarella sticks wrapped with Kraft Singles cheesy. There's a lot of grunting going on and a pretty serious earthquake. You should probably get out of there, Ryu. And in typical Ninja Gaiden fashion, we get to watch the castle collapse. And we get to watch it for an extended amount of time. I mean like, this thing needs to break in several different pieces, and then collapse in the middle. Like, yeah, they really want us to make sure that we know what happened to this thing. Whew. He Man is going to be so upset when he gets back from vacation. He's probably going to blame Orko. And yeah, this is still going on. Oh, that's a big piece. Yep, yep, going down into the sea. And is that it? Nope, no, that is not it. We still need that main last bit to go down. And... There it goes. Yep. Yep, that was worth waiting for. Watching it all from afar. It's Ryu and Irene. Well, what's left of Irene. but none of that destruction can bring back Irene. Irene, I'm so sorry. My clan, defeating the demons, none of that matters. Now that you're gone. That sounds like the breakdown part in the middle of a boys to men song. What's that flashing coming from the dragon sword? Oh, yeah. If you're thinking that it might bring Irene back to life, well, yeah, of course that's what it's going to do. I mean, we could have seen this coming from a mile away. It does make a little bit of sense, though. The Dark Sword of Chaos was able to bring back Jocquio from the dead, so you'd think that its good equivalent would be able to bring somebody good back to life as well. I mean, I guess that makes sense. 
I think they just wanted it to end happily. But that's okay. It'll help set up Ninja Gaiden 3, because Irene has to die again at the beginning of that one. Irene wants to know what happened to her. Are we going to tell her? You know that she was dead for several hours and possible brain damage, all that kind of thing? Nah, no, nah, no, nah, it looks like we're not going to. Everything's fine, Irene. The darkness is gone now. Oh, oh, Ryu. And then, of course, they have to get a little bit sappy with each other. And Ryu tries to go a little poetic, even. Look. Can you believe how beautiful our world is, Irene? And it'll stay like this. Forever. Well, I hate to break it to you, Ryu. But it won't be long before Ninja Gaiden 3 happens. And you'll be back in action once more. But for now, enjoy that sunset. You've earned it. As night falls upon the pair, we zoom out. There's one last shooting star in the sky, and then it's time to roll the credits. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Ninja Gaiden 2 and end the evil plans of the Jacquio once again. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because there will always be more evil demons trying to invade our plane of existence. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.